Hey, what's poppin' you? Sizzle here. Today I'm doing my first ever VOD review, and it's of this nice soldier player right here called Wumi. Uh, this is allegedly a gold two match. I have no real reason to doubt that. Just want to put that out there. That's what he told me. Uh, yeah. Started the game, probably tapped out, you know, talking to someone, usual stuff, whatever. Let's get over to the real action. Started the game, classic soldier spot, just up on this back high ground here. Nice place to be. Uh, let's, let's see what happens when things get started. Peeking early here, risky maneuver. I mean, you can pull it off. Nice, nice track and aim, especially for gold too. That's ridiculous. But you can see right here this nice little trace line from the Ana. That could have been a widow headshot. And until you know that for a fact, uh, you don't want to peek such an open angle. Right? That's the first mistake right here. Uh, instead of peeking right here, where you can be visible, you know, you can get seen. From here, you can get seen from here. Obviously, like pretty much anywhere over here, you can actually still see him. Uh, and I think maybe even up here, yeah. Even if you're up here, you'll see him real easy. Instead of peeking that uh, far out, you could have peeked way back here for a scouted, you know, check, is there a widow? And then once you know there's no widow, Rahanza, then you can be a bit more aggressive like he is here. Uh, just kind of something to keep in mind, not like the end of the world. You're normally not going to get punished or something like that. But yeah, nice, nice uh, helix and tracking so far. Just cleaning up with the you know, mercy pocket. Pretty decent so far, nothing really to talk about, honestly. I mean, he's just killing things. He's, he's staying high ground, killing things. No need to push up here or anything. Never gonna really say much about his teammates, even if they are playing really bad, because this is gold. Uh, you know, you're not expecting anyone to play good. Now this is holding a bit aggressive here, especially now that they're on Hanzo. And in right there, you can see, gets punished for it. Uh, when they got a Hanzo, you can't challenge that long distance on Soldier. If your other heroes, maybe a Cassidy or Ash, can actually challenge this, I don't think Soldier's got that long range, right? Soldier is a mid-range fighter only. He can do damage long and close range, but you want to consistently position yourself to be at mid-range. This here is, is long range. I'd say mid-range for Soldier here, probably maybe like the wheel of this bus if even is concerned mid-range i'd say you'd probably want to be somewhere you just kind of see where it goes to yellow between the orange and the green like right here that's probably about mid-range from up there uh so you don't want to be peeking that especially once you find out they do have a hanzo he had a chance to kind of run away and evacuate and reposition for that uh and he didn't and he got punished for it right that was that was just a mistake right the first time you get punished for it second time it happens you get unlucky and you get punished for it but just don't put yourself in that position in the first place uh, multiple things here too. There's really never a reason to be this far out uh, because you can see all the same things from right here. I mean, this is literally just a safer place to be because if you're over here where he was, uh, if Anna was here peeking and not just healing, uh, she could have shot him. And if he's just a little bit off to the side like this or something, you can still see the same stuff, but he's not visible to that Anna. And you know, peeking the angles, a uh, pretty important thing to do. You want to always be thinking, what can I see, what can my teammates see, and what can the enemy see whenever you're anywhere on the map. That's like your, that's what should be going through your head. Uh, for good players, it's subconscious, and that's something to really think about. Bam. Yeah. I guess I should probably have skipped to him respawning or whatever. You know, let's see the, let's see the rollout of spawns, make sure it makes sense. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, unless you're really crunched for time. Bam. Yeah. Good idea playing back here. You need to be cautious of the sight lines. Now this I don't like. A lot of the things he did there for positioning, I don't really like. Uh, let's let's get started from the start. Right from the start, good idea. You know, you have this nice position. You can see Mercy. You can see Ryan. Uh, if you didn't know Ryan was anti half health, and even if he did, honestly, half health is still a lot of health for Ryan. So shooting the Mercy here was the right play. That's the right target to pick. Uh, I'm not going to comment on how this Ana got here. I don't really know, and this is obviously not where you want to be on Ana. But let, that's not, you know, this, this isn't about Ana. Let's get back to our soldier right here. Uh, you, you got this nice view at the start, and he plays it really well, right? Takes the shots on Mercy. Shots are really good, especially for a gold two player. Uh, but yeah, then from here, right, he's realized this position by the wall is actually pretty nice because you can see all the people here and. This, you should at least know, there's at least a Mercy and a Ryan right here, so actually holding this space, holding this angle, is very good. Uh, but then he makes a very key mistake that you'll see, like, a second later. He walks out to the left, 
uh, I mean, you can do this, obviously, but especially if you have this, it really depends on what your teams are telling you. Uh, but even without your team telling you stuff, peeking out on the left here is a very, very risky play. And if you're going to do it, you want to do it further back or do it slower. To just to first gather intel, then go in closer. Uh, but notice, because he peeked out left here, if he held this corner and walked up, he would have only been fighting that soldier. But because he peeks out to the left here, he's fighting that soldier. He's fighting that Hanzo. If they re-peek here, he's also fighting them. Right, That's something you want to be thinking about. And the trade-off, right? instead of going to the right here and just seeing soldier... The only thing he loses out here is is not seeing this Hanzo, but honestly, that's not really... Uh, you know, soldier versus Hanzo is a very weird fight. You normally don't want to force that engagement if you don't have to. But yeah, target priority was right here. Like, that soldier obviously is on your screen and getting pinged by someone, uh, but he's way too long range for your damage to actually be meaningful, unless he was super low, which I don't think he was, and I don't think he had a reason to think he was. Now here, another thing, I mean, he's low as fuck, so I think he just dies here anyway. When you start seeing a Rhine pinning to you, you just need to get out. You need to get out of Rhine's swing range and just run. It's not worth getting this 5 or 10 extra damage by keep shooting here if you could have just ran and left. And he had time to do it. He could have started running. I mean, that Hanzo did a good thing and pushed up the space. How they haven't seen this McCree is, is well and truly beyond me, but it seems like he's not doing too much anyway. So, kind of makes sense. They're not looking at him. Yeah, let's skip up ahead a little bit. Okay. Nothing too crazy here. I mean, this is a pretty aggressive place to hold, but if your tank calls to hold it, you kind of have to find a place to be. Uh, being high ground obviously can be good here, but honestly, I don't know how good this high ground here is going to be for you. Uh, it really depends on how your team's playing this. We can see the Ana's in front of you. Uh, that shouldn't really happen. I mean, it kind of will here because the Ana's playing some really shit positions because it's gold. You know, what can you expect? Uh, but yeah, Ryan's holding here, right? It's not actually too bad of a hold spot. You see this soldier here, you can't contest from this high ground because you have this massive fucking thing in the way. If your Ryan's going to hold this far up, you need to kind of probably play around where Ana actually is right now. They play the stairs here, something get some more visibility. The stairs here are risky though, because like you can see, you can see literally everyone from here, meaning everyone can see you. I would have played probably where this Ana was, so that anyone that you know pushes on your Ryan tries to damage him, you can instantly enter with some raw damage. Uh, from up here, all you can see is like the people that really overextend, and even then, you can't see most of them. Uh, if you were down here instead, like right here, you can also rotate a lot more easy. Right, so you could see, I mean, I'm sure someone saw the soldier go to the side here. If you even saw it yourself, you could have went here and started, you know, I don't know if you could actually see that from here. But you can make your way around. You can pressure in a way that only affects the soldier and really force him to kind of make a choice, move, die, you know, engage with you or whatever. Uh, but being down here allows for more rotations, allows for more visibility. You can You can really kind of adjust better as the fight goes on. Uh, being up here, I've only ever really been up here uh, on DPS if my tank's holding by this bus here, and it's still a, even then really a forward angle. Uh, I generally see this used for attackers, you know, people that can wall climb, wall climb up the bus and stuff, or even soldier, you can actually just rock and jump onto the bus and then jump up here. And that's kind of how you access high ground on attack. On defense, though, uh, I don't know, it's just not a good place to be because this thing blocks so much visibility. Uh, and you're still pretty exposed to the elements right here. I mean, if there's a Hanzo, like one that is right here, it can pretty easily think from there. Widow can easily take you out right there. It's super open. You know, there's no railings recover anything. Uh, the only thing you can really fall back to is this room, and, and that's a really long... You know, you have to get all the way out and around to get into a new position. Uh, if you're down here, you simply just back up behind the bus. You can even go to the left and change your angle up. You can go to the right and go main if you have to do that for some reason. I can't think of why Soldier would, but yeah. Uh, this is also much too long range. This is kind of what I mentioned earlier. Uh, he seems to be somewhat aware of that long range thing. Like back here when there was a Hanzo on point and there was a soldier up there, he actually shot the Hanzo because he was mid range instead of the long range soldier, uh, which is a good target priority. But right here, you're just setting yourself up for longer shots on soldier and you don't really do damage that way. So that's something we'd be cautious of. Uh, anyway, let's get back to actually see how the fight goes down. Yeah. Right, this is what I'm talking about. It took him so long to get around. Uh, he could have he could have been more engaged during this whole fight. Nice shatter by his run. Here's the visor. 
if you hear the visor, you got to make a choice here, right? Your choice is either A, shoot the Mercy Pocket Aim while well, you can see her, B, shoot the Visoring Soldier, or C, uh, get the fuck out and run away. The weird part is he actually pushed up from this bus. Uh, I, I think instead of dropping back this way, he could have went forward this way if he saw that Ryan was going to shatter. I think this was kind of a weird one to play around, though, because, you know, it's not... You're not 100% sure that your Ryan's going to shatter there and make a lot more space than normal. Uh, so with that knowledge, I would have actually probably done something similar to him. Uh, but if you want to run away, I mean, you can go out here where your Ana is. But this is just a really shit place to be. You don't want to be out open in the middle here. There's nowhere for you to escape to. Uh, on other characters, that might be okay because you can't escape a lot of time anyway. But on Soldier, you know, the king of escaping stuff. You want to be somewhere where you can instantly sprint and run away. Right? Soldiers are really good at that, better than probably any other character except maybe Tracer. Or Lucio, obviously. Okay, he dies here. That's kind of fair. That was a weird fight. That's a hard one to kind of know where to position properly in. I don't think he did anything too weird there. I think he just got caught out in a bad time. Anyway, let's see what he does here. He builds build up visor. Like everyone on the enemy team is ult except that soldier. Let's see what he does. Interesting. All right, the, sh the tracking it wasn't perfect, but that that happens. Uh, the visor pop very very good though. I will say it. This is not something I expect from a gold player. Uh, most gold players, this is a common mistake. Low, uh, low elo in general, not just gold, but uh, they they come here, they pop visor like back here, then they run out, then they start shooting. That's a really big mistake. Uh, you want when you pop visor, you want to be able to already see people. Because it doesn't take that long to activate, and if you are running during half of your visor, you're wasting a ton of time on it. If you saw what he did here, first up, going up here, generally a very, very good idea. Most DPS, especially Soldier. This back high ground here, uh, if his team wasn't getting smoked so hard, he would have just been back here. Uh, maybe up here, it really depends on the enemy team, but most of the time, you can play somewhere back here. And most of this is just outside of mid-range, but close enough that you generally get some good damage. And if, you, if they get closer, you can go here. It depends on, yet again, if they have Widow and stuff. Kind of get to play around the enemy comp. Uh, this is a very sniper-heavy map, though, so you want to be a lot more cautious of those sight lines if they do have one. Uh, either way, this flank here, very good. The trigger discipline, not shooting right away. He did over-peak here. I do want to mention that. He didn't get punished for it, obviously. But he could have stayed closer back to the wall so that if anyone did see him... Uh, so, sorry, if he didn't plan on engaging here, if he planned on shooting people right here and he just happened not to, then obviously peeking out like this to get more info might have been better. But if your goal is just to kind of move along the side here, you want to stick to the wall as much as possible, not be visible as long as possible. Uh, and, and generally, when you're holding any kind of high ground or ledge or something, you don't want to be up front. Because uh, when you're running right in front right here, right? look at what I can see. I can see a lot more of the map. But that also means a lot more than I can see me. Someone could be right here and see me on high ground if I'm up by that ledge. Someone could be all the way back here and see me on high ground if I'm up by that ledge. If I'm by the wall, though, I still see almost everything the same. But you actually have to be, like, out here to see me. Like, if you're, if you're under me or something, you can't damage me at all if I'm by that wall. So that's something you would be very cautious of. Uh, I don't think he messed that up here outside of this initial peak. Yeah, like, notice how you did play by the wall most of this time. Good, smart positioning. Uh, the visor was slightly off. I mean, he didn't see anyone at the time, but he kind of knew everyone is right here and already in vision. Uh, this is a really good flank, though. Soldier, big flank here. You want to get on those off angles. You want to just kind of annoy the enemy, and he's doing this very well here. Uh, one thing to mention here, though, big mistake, uh, mid-visor. Right, so the, the initial visor pop, actually pretty good, like he knows what's going to go on. I guess he thought people might have been on his left, and then he decided, actually, never mind, they're not. Uh, but yeah, good pop here, good first two kills, right? But from here, uh, like, like here's your options. I'm sure your team is talking about this soldier shooting you, or you can actually see his bullets coming out from this way. So you know there's a soldier here. Uh, you haven't seen the Ana, so it's maybe safe to assume she's somewhere on the left or something. But honestly, I would have never guessed Ana was right here if I didn't see her personally myself. What you do see is just a tank, and with Visor, a tank on full health with Visor is just not worth it. Uh, instead of shooting the tank, he could have maybe positioned around. I would have maybe gone behind this car to kind of peek this area. Then he would have also spotted on and probably died. So I would have died here uh, to that Ana just because this is abnormal positioning, I feel. Uh, you can also just go out on the left and look for people here or something. But just shooting the tank with Visor when they're on full health, if you have anything else available, 
as a complete waste of time. And he has two other people alive. He knows Soldier and Ana are alive somewhere, so it's better to kind of hunt them out instead of just shooting the tank for, like, three damage. Uh, shooting the tank for three damage in most other situations is fine, because you're getting ult charge, but with Visor, you're not even getting ult charge. You're just kind of doing damage that can get healed off, so the enemy gets ult charge. You can see right here, he even saw the Soldier on the left. He could have maybe ran back to his team and just shot him down from there. Uh, especially, you don't have to have natural cover when you have your own Reinhardts and the rest of your team backing you up instead. He didn't actually get punished right here, but he very easily could have. Uh, and then once he got that soldier kill, he should have probably ran away to get out of Ryan's melee range. He's also holding very aggressive here, but I guess they didn't cap. Uh, for some reason, I thought they capped and they would spawn right there. They never cap, so he actually knows they're not going to be here. It's a good play all around. Uh, but now that you won the fight, instead of just standing here, maybe alt tabbing or something, just run back up the stairs, get high ground again. Do you want to keep holding favorable positions? Being on the ground for Soldier, generally not a favorable position, especially on this map right here. Maybe he actually does do it when he taps back in. But that is, uh, after fights, the time where you can move over. Now he doesn't go high ground. Holding this low ground gives you so much less protection. It's actually not really about visibility. Like, being low ground, you can see all the same things. Uh, but being high ground, you're just harder to kill, right? You can basically do the same vision, same damage from low and high ground, but being high ground, it's harder to shoot back at you or, or kind of approach you and a lot of other characters. So that's kind of why you, you want to be there. This is way too long range. It's not even worth shooting at that type of range, especially when, they, like I said, they have a Hanzo. That's just not an engagement worth taking. Take some better off angles here. Uh, he's he's now okay. So I haven't mentioned this this whole time, but Soldier is a character that specializes in mobility and getting those off angles. Uh, if you're just holding main, like you're kind of just shouldn't be on this character. Be on like Sojourn or, or Tree or Ash or someone. Those are characters that hold down main angles. Soldier has that sprint. That's his strongest thing in his kit. He can sprint up top, get a nice off angle up here. You could even go for a ballsy flank over here if you feel like you got that in you. You could even flank up here, and actually this is when you use this platform. It's a good flanking platform, because you can actually escape very easily out this way. Uh, but just standing main on soldiers is a complete waste of his kit. You don't want to be doing that, and you'll see he's he's not really getting a lot of good damage or shots in here, because he's not playing off angles, not forcing those mid-range fights. Uh, he even messes up. He walks even closer. Like, I know his, his McCree also did that, but we're not talking about him here. I mean, he's gold for a reason. This guy's trying to improve. You don't want to walk close when their tank is alive. You don't want to enter the tank's you know, melee range, or assuming you still thought they'd Orion. If you knew they'd a Sigma, there's also less reason to push super close either way, because uh, you're going to get shielded off from your team and die and not be able to get healed. It's not what happens here, but he does actually run right away. That's good. That's something you want to do. I thought he might not for a second. I thought he might just keep shooting. That's how you get killed. Uh, but yet again, this is somewhere where off angles would be beneficial. I think holding this back corner doesn't do shit for you. McCree's already doing that. Ana's already doing that. And this Kiriko, to some degree, is probably already doing that. Uh, you could actually have probably flanked around this way, peeked down this hallway. If they do then look at you, you can literally just run back to your team for free. Being at these off angles would have been way more useful. You would have pressured out maybe the Moira or something. Uh, I don't think there was a way you could have pressured Mercy or Hanzo, but this soldier's not doing anything on the other team either. He's he's way too far to do any real damage, so it's really just the Hanzo is kind of an untouchable because nobody was high ground to stop him from going there himself. Um, but you could have easily helped your tank out here or something if you just were a bit more proactive and found the off angle. You obviously want to do it safely. You don't want to just like rush over here or something on the open, but you could have easily went, you know, check the doorway, check for a second, and then kind of check out here maybe peek out here but i would say stay in this building you know take some shots on their tank while you can uh then if you notice them backing up you can go over here and start taking shots on the other people if someone calls or if you notice the tank coming back in then you literally just run back out right out of here and this is kind of your safe space where you're not going to get a lot done but you won't really die either uh to be fair this is a weird kind of hold in general the tanks and everything are all over the place so it's not very easy to recognize that but notice how he's doing like literal like maybe three damage per clip because <laughs> he's too far away he's not at that off angle he's not kind of positioning the way he has to and then his tank dies because he was super out of position but that's not really his fault you need to run 
like I understand I I just said you know always go mid range of soldier, but this this corner is somewhere where they're now looking. Every one of their team has been looking at you for like the last twenty minutes. Uh, you can back out to here so that you know you can slowly back away because you're down a tank and they have a tank. Or if you really want to hold this for some reason, which this early in the game you don't really have to force an engagement this hard. Uh, I I would have just started back into the left here and started getting out because there's not really reason to keep this fight going when they have a tank and you don't. But if you do want to do that, this right flank is completely open. Uh, I would have still been on high ground on Soldier. I think if he was up here, he would have never had a reason to leave, and he probably would have gotten three, four kills by now instead of just kind of sticking back here and getting three or four damage. All right, kills are better than damage. <laughs> but yeah, overall, not too bad so far. Well, through the game. I'm going to try to not do as much harsh commentary. But yeah, just gets picked by the Hanzo because he peeks the same angle for the fourth time, and, and then his team gets taken out because they shouldn't have been there either, but, you know. Yet again, not really commentary on what he's doing, which is what we're here to do. Next up, spots his Ryan super low, sees the Moira pushed out of position, and then focuses her perfect. Ignoring that soldier there, very smart. I don't know if it was intentional, but that was... What the fuck is this guy going to do? Five damage? Six damage? He literally just secured his team a free kill and a support. Uh, if I'm the tank here, I'm pushing up on that. Even though I'm on half health, I know my team's coming out. Right? But anyway, that's not bad, uh, bad tank. Just don't like seeing bad tanks. Can't deny that res, that's fair. Uh, taking the high ground here is interesting. The problem I have with this high ground is the visibility. Because when you're here, I mean, you literally can't see anything. When you're here, you can barely see anything. But when people are looking to you, they can see you clear as day. I mean, this is super visible right here. I generally almost never go here. I think the only people I've seen here are like super omega cracked widows that are actually like looking through the leaves and able to headshot you. But those are like GM1 widows. That's not like a, you know, that's not what a standard player is going to be doing. Generally, don't look at this shit. You need some crazy mechanics to pull anything off from this. It's not worth it. Uh, stay. This is one of the few situations. Low ground probably better. Common off angle is actually over here because this is really hard for them to pressure and you can literally just run back here and be completely untouchable. So peeking this might have been a good idea. Uh, you could have maybe stayed along the wall here and slowly peeked out this way and gotten some damage that way. Or you could have even challenged the soldier over here uh, on your own. I think that's something you could have maybe done. But being right here is probably the single worst place other than just running it down main or something to be. Uh, just you don't, you don't do anything from here, right? The problem is you can't see shit. They can easily see you, and that's just bad. And then also your teammates, I mean, they can actually see you, so it's not bad for that reason. But those are the three things with positioning and angles. That's the big three things you want to see. Uh, think about. What can I see? What can they see? How easily can they see me uh, from their position? How easily can I see them? Like, Can I catch them at a good time? Uh, can I make it so it's really hard to shoot back at me? Uh, and then the third one, how visible am I to my healers or supports or whatever you want to call them? Uh, and and he's he's pretty visible to them. That's the one thing that the spot isn't completely awful for. But you, this is just a really bad place to be. It has awful visibility. He does fall down from it, but just going there uh, idly doesn't really do anything. But this is another thing. Okay, I don't know what the fuck the tank's doing. To be fair, that's hard to play around. But I think it, he would have been way better. If he was in this off angle, even if he hadn't shot at this point, I mean, look at how nice this is. You can literally see the whole enemy team. Obviously, they can all see you, but this is uh, half of them are pushed up to a point where if your team was positioned normally, uh, they'd have to pick between shooting your team or shooting the one isolated guy over here. Most of the time, they're going to focus on the forward, not the one. And if they do focus on the one, you just run away. You back up because you can do that. Your soldier... Uh, and then your team can start doing like a like a 4v5 where they're not looking at them. And that's just really good value. That's the value of soldiers, those off angles. You want to be focused on those off angles. Obviously, positioning yourself is great from there. But the main thing is, is focusing on the actual, you know, ex before you focus on getting like a good angle added position, you know, kind of like when I said earlier, when you're up here, you know, being against the wall instead of in front of the ledge. Uh, before you get on that, you actually have to think about being on this ledge in the first place, right? And that's kind of what I'm getting at. Uh, before you focus on, you know, when do I back out of here? When do I you know, start shooting from here? You actually have to get here and that you have to mentally think to be at that off angle. That seems to be the number one problem with him right now. I think he probably has the aim to hit like high masters, maybe even low GM. But the tracking is actually really good here. The positioning in game sense just is not there. Okay, yeah. I mean, 
standard visor. I think he maybe could have ignored the tank a little bit, but that's like extreme nitpicking. And then the Moira just in his backlink killing everyone is something he literally cannot do anything about. Some fights, it, it just isn't going to be your fault. A lot of these fights so far have been. This one fight, I'd say he played, you know, as good as he could. Yeah. I'm not sure if this matters, but uh, also when you're when you're trying to get back to cart fast, which I think is what his goal was here, uh, don't jump. I'm pretty sure on almost every character, except characters with special qualities like Reinhardt and, and Ball, I think they have specific. Like Ryan, when you cancel pin and jump, I think you get a bit more speed that way. And then Ball, you can conserve speed on your rollout by uh, jumping. And I think Lucio maybe as well in Doom. But for most characters that are just have normal movement, like Soldier, McCree, or Honor, or whatever, I think jumping slightly slower. Especially in Soldier's case, because his sprint is notably faster. Uh, so, staying grounded there might matter on some maps. Obviously, clearly didn't matter, matter here, but if it's like overtime and you really need this touch, uh, that could have been the difference between touching. Just something to kind of think about. Yeah. Never just stare into a wall like this. I mean, there's, like, positioning here is fine. This is actually an off angle on the left here. There's, it's, it's actually kind of hard to challenge you back here. This is a good place to be. Um, but when you started getting low and you started getting pressured, when you walk to the left here, you first of you could have sprinted uh, instead of walking. But healing yourself here, fine maneuver. But what are you looking at? You're looking at this tree. You're looking at this wall on the left uh, and, and your own spawn door. And what can the enemies say? Let's think about it, right? So they're here. You you would see them if they're here, but what about if they're back here? I mean, you're completely exposed. If you're on the, you know, this backside, completely exposed. And this is very easy to reach. I mean, they do it in about one second. So that's how you know it's easy. If they're up here, they also see you. Uh, instead of looking this way, you maybe could have held... If you want to look this way, go closer, right? You know, you're going to be more exposed this way a little bit, but you're already low, and then if they want to kill you, they're going to kill you anyway. Go a little bit closer, see a little bit more. But more importantly, actually just be aware that they probably someone is going to try coming this way. I mean, it's abnormal to go this way, but you're one of two people alive. They have a lot of reason to go for you right now. Uh, especially if, if the Moira or whoever is just shooting you knows you're low as fuck. They're going to fucking focus you down, right? You're, you're going to get killed. Uh, so you want to be really cautious of the side angles. I mean, this came down to a mechanical difference. The fact that you killed someone before dying uh, is literally just because you're mechanically better than them. But if he positioned better, you would have, like, lived on more health as well. Yeah, really big shatter from your run. But you just ignored the res. You knew that person got res. That was very clearly audibly there. It showed in the chat. Uh, once he killed the two people he shattered, and it's just a tank versus your tank, you, start, you, you should go back to focusing the DPS, right? The pecking order of characters to focus in Overwatch First, beyond everything else, always kill supports or healers first. They need to die, right? That's priority number one. You're kind of past that phase, right? The supports, healers have died, or the Mercy didn't die, but you couldn't really pressure her. Uh, then it's DPS. So we have, where are the DPS? Is the soldier in an off angle? Uh, is, is the Hanzo, like, out in front? Can I shoot them? Because they have lower health. They're easier to kill. And only then, after all that, do you kill the tank. The exception being if the tank is super out of position, playing overly aggressive or something, or is like on super low health, then obviously you kill the tank. But that's true for anyone. If anyone's on 10 health, you're going to shoot them. Uh, so here, you should have actually probably been keeping eyes on this soldier a little bit more than you did. I mean, finishing that shatter, really good. Once you did that, though, you should turn back to the left and kind of look for that soldier, because you knew he was there. I don't know if you die for it here. Like... Good idea to, to get out of the way instead of continuing that fight and then go heal up. That was very good. Uh, and then your Kiriko saved you here, but that soldier could have easily finished you in most other elos, and that's something you have to be cautious of. Yeah. Right here, same thing. Don't be in this high ground. I don't know why McCree's here, I don't know why you're here. This soldier is... <laughs> Run some laps into you guys, and it's kind of funny. But yeah, don't be here. This is a bad place to be. Like I said, far left is good. Far right is good. Against this wall here is okay. It's probably the least preferable for Soldier. But actually, back down here is pretty solid. Uh, and, and mainly, I mean, Soldier should always go here. And every one of my games, Soldier goes here. And Plat and Diamond and Masters and GM, they're always right here. 
uh, even with the Mercy Pocket, because then they can always back up the heater, which is a pretty decent secondary angle once they're more pushed in. And you're going to know they're more pushed in when they're focusing you here. They're bound to be a little bit more pushed in, so you can back up to this angle, you know, see some things. Uh, if you want to cover the right flank, you can do that on Soldier. Not really my preferred thing, but it's an option. You could do a hard flank and maybe get a few kills that way. Generally avoid this middle room, because like I said, Soldier's bad at close range, and someone's normally somewhere either near here or in here. Uh, but playing back here also isn't awful. Like Most of the stuff you engage from here is mid-range. If they push the right, you, you're mid-range right here. If they push here, you back up for two seconds, and then you're mid-range. And if they're pushing main, uh, everything from that position on this corner, even like back here, is, is mid-range, and you can damage them well. Just not up here. This this spot is awful. Stop going there. <laughs> you gotta think about visibility. You can't see shit. Yeah, notice how even though other people are fighting, other people are doing things, you can't see anything or do anything. Uh, even if this position was amazing, as a soldier player, you can get back here in two seconds. I mean, it's literally just dropped from there. You could have pushed up a little bit in some way when you realized people were fighting and you weren't part of that fight. Because you don't want to not be part of a fight when your tank is a part of the fight, uh, unless he's about to back up. You know, if, there, if, there's, if your tank was on this corner fighting people, taking damage, whatever, and he can instantly go here and be with you in the same LOS, that's fine. When your tank's all the way up here... Uh, even if he's making a stupid play, you kind of got to be with him. It's, the, it's a team game. If you have a stupid player, you have to play stupider to kind of match the energy. And playing back here is doing nothing. But, but you got even further back, which is even worse. You're just not going to do anything from here. That sim's going to start melting your tank for free. That fight is going to be big value. But somehow your tank gets out healed all that. Pop Visor here. Pop, why are you holding? I guess maybe because he knew the Nano was coming. I feel like this is still just a better Nano Visor. You could have maybe even called that. Say like, oh, Nano me on it or something. Unless this was a long planned thing. And sometimes in gold, it takes people time to, to kind of, you know, get stuff down. So maybe he didn't expect the Nano here. But I think, you know, when, when you see the tank on the far side, you see all three squishies on the right. And they're super isolated like that. It's a big free visor, big free helix rocket. Your spamming Helix is on cooldown. That's, that's a very good thing. But yeah, your, your tank, obviously. You basically did what you could have, which is fine. Not popping Visor here because I guess you probably realized they were going to nano your tank. Maybe they called it ahead of time. Normally, people nano Visor in most of these situations because then having just a raw shad or something tends to be better. But maybe if you expected the Ryan to get nano or if they calmed it or something, that's fine. Uh, and, it, and it ended up being good, because he ended up not overlapping ult, so maybe that's a bad call on my part. But I just felt like that was a really good mana opportunity. I guess you could have also recognized that Ryan was going to go for a shatter there, because he has the same opportunity. He was standing right next to you, he could have done the same thing. Maybe you realized that and just tailed it for that. Yeah, notice here, when you were holding like here for like a second or two by mistake, like notice how much damage you were doing. Like, just a second ago, before you kept backing up, you were doing so much damage right here, because that's that mid-range, that's where you want to be. Right, this, like I said, this corner is a nice place to be. You can back up, like, pretty much everywhere, you can be visible to your supports pretty much everywhere. And you have sights on everything, but you can also dodge the sight lines very, very easily, uh, if you ever have to. So that's, yeah. But meanwhile, you backed up a little bit, and your damage completely fell off a hill. I guess he held it for Kitsune Visor, so completely fair. Uh, disregard my, my earlier comment. Right here, same mistake. Same mistake. Just because you can shoot the tank with your ult doesn't mean you should. When you have Kitsune Visor, your supports are actually probably going to be focused on keeping you up because they specifically dedicated stuff to Kitsune Visor. When you go in it first, it's fine, right? You focus, you focus down like the sim, you start shooting the Mercy, that's all good. Now from here, you can see on your screen Moira. Uh, you might have had knowledge that there's, you know, another DPS somewhere on the screen, and then obviously Mercy's still up there. Instead of shooting the guy on full health who has two supports healing him, uh, I'd just run past him. I mean, you're gonna have heals on you, he's gonna have to choose between you or your tank, then if he, if he chooses you and your tank is right there, your tank can absolutely slaughter this guy. So if, if you die, but their tank kind of dies for it, it's worth it. I'd walk past, especially when he starts left shifting, he literally can't attack you. Just run past him, start shooting that Moira, you should have seen her, I and mean, if you didn't, that's unfortunate, but I don't know what to say, you should have seen her. Should have been a pretty obvious play to, to kind of sprint past and continue shooting. 
Uh, instead of just waiting here. Especially with Kitsune Visor, you can afford to be more aggressive. Now there is there is a ping from your team that there is a soldier behind. So I think someone just pinged it like a few times. Ana's clearly fighting it, Kiriko's even fighting it, and now Kree is fighting it. So now you guys are fighting like a 2v3 up here and like a 3v1 back here. This soldier is doing what you should have been doing most of these fights. You did him a few fights, but you, you haven't done it on second or third at all, really. Uh, he has that off angle. Notice how just by being at this off angle, he got three people on your team to turn around. He might have literally just saved this fight for his team. That should have been an instant loss. Uh, because you know, your Ryan's on half and you're not full either. And both your supports are looking away, your decrees looking away, all just because of this one guy shooting at an off angle, uh, and who can easily run away and will probably run away in one second. All right? He took some shots, he unfortunately got slapped, but he was kind of headed back to this main hallway where he could get out. And notice how your whole team all of a sudden has to back up because this one guy made this one play. That's the power of off angles. That's the power of kind of making those openings on Soldier. Because now this elder team is starting to, to walk back in. I don't know where the hell Mercy went. Did she die? Oh, she's up there. Okay. She bet a Glock. She is Glocky. Okay, that's a <laughs> that's a whole other thing. That's just something you see sometimes. Uh, but when there's a Valk Mercy, honestly, almost ne unless you have Visor or like Deadeye or something, I don't even shoot at them most of the time. It's just they heal it back. It's also impossible to hit them in the first place. Like it's just not worth it. That's the one exception where you don't really shoot supports. Either that or when they have like be freshly popped in them. But even then, you can probably shoot them. Okay, another mistake right here. Uh, you got lucky here that the Sig didn't aim that properly. But when Sig pops ult and you got time to run away from him, you're right at the edge, run for one second. It's not going to kill you. You're not going to do much less damage. If instead of just kind of standing here and slowly backing up, you just completely sprinted towards your McCree, uh, you would have erased any chance of this playing you. Luckily, it didn't, but you easily could have got you with that and you would have definitely died. Good to uh, under Ryan, though, to notice that opportunity for another Shatter. Man is absolutely holding down your team right here. And yeah, stop. What? Okay, what the fuck was that? You played pretty well into every ability so far. You literally shot into that, heard the noise it made, waited like half a second. You were like, you know what, let me keep shooting. This guy needs a little bit of extra armor health. There was just no reason for that. You get closer and start mailing him if you want, but there was no reason for that. And also, you did see Soldier walking up. Like I said, even I, I, this might be the exception, because the tank was low enough that you actually probably want to prioritize the tank. When he starts backing in, you're in overtime, and the other guy's trying to touch. Generally, just focus the guy he's trying to touch. Could have killed that Soldier really fast with your team. I mean, ended up not mattering, but it could have. Yeah, overall, really good for gold. I mean, I know I haven't really said anything positive, I don't think. But I'm I'm pretty impressed with what I've seen so far. A lot of these mistakes I expected to see are not being made. And the mechanics are really, really good. It's solid tracking here. Okay, let's see how he starts this map. Probably shouldn't have skipped that far ahead. Okay. <laughs> this is an interesting scenario. Good good start so far. That was perfect. You were exactly positioned for mid-range. You maximize your damage and notice how much damage you did. Like I got shredded. Okay, but then next up, the uh, the other problem is you just saw a Bastion. And this is a very close range area. You need to be cautious of this Bastion for the next like five seconds. If they mention, okay, Bastion's pushed out, then Bastion's pushed out, you don't worry about it. If Bastion's still there, uh, I mean, you could kind of walk with your Ryan and then try that. But what I maybe try to do, check this left side, see if you get any free picks this way. I think you can uh, jump up to here and then rocket jump up to here and then check that out. I don't know if you can do that. That might be a stupid idea. Uh, you could also check out main. I mean, soldiers got the mobility. You could check out main as your tank is kind of pressuring there. Uh, when they start looking at you, you can literally run all the way around back up here in a very short amount of time on soldier. Uh, or you could even try this little bottom path. That's a bit more risky, though. People tend not to do that. And especially for Soldier with that close range, this could be risky. If anyone's even considering holding here, uh, they could absolutely smoke you. But for me personally, I feel like if I see a Bastion that close, uh, I leave that to my McCree, Mercy, and everyone else in the Reinhardt, and then I check this left off angle, right? Check the off angle or check main, either or. Uh, by just kind of going with them, I mean, it's not awful, but those off angles are a lot more powerful. If the Bastion looks away from your Reinhardt for a second when he's up here, uh, if I'm if I'm on that Reinhardt, he's gonna pin off the map. If I'm not on that Reinhardt, someone else, he's still probably gonna start swinging on him or something. 
uh, just because you're over here. And if they're not even over here at all, which they aren't right now, you could even get around back here. You know, you could start shooting from here, and this is a very common off angle I see tracers and soldiers get into on enemy teams all the time. This normally is what makes me lose first point, is when someone goes on this off angle, goes around, makes their way up here, takes some nice shots from here, because it's a great place to be. Uh, but if they start looking at you here, you can just run it even further, make your way all the way around here. If no one's up here, you can take this, and then that's basically a free win for your team right there, because this, this place back here is so powerful to hold. Uh, but if they're back there too, I mean, you could literally run back here for a second, you know, grab a health back or two, and then come back in, either back down here, up here, or back here. You just have a lot of options when you start pushing those off angles. Uh, but instead, obviously go with your team. Not the worst play. I mean, Bastion did just use Bastion for him. And McCree is kind of stupid for dying to that. That <laughs> He just walked in front of his tank and died, and shocker, shocker. You could have killed Mercy there. You should have. The millisecond you see a, a Mercy or support on your screen, you should instantly try to start killing them. And in this case, it probably would have killed Mercy. That Mercy was on like 10 health. If you shot her once, she would have died. Uh, now this is an interesting place to be stuck in. Uh, you run back up a bit too far, I feel. Bastion form's clearly over, but this is not about him, it's about you. Uh, for playing with your team, you're playing well, but Soldier really shouldn't be here most of the time. You're not too awful, though. It's just the worst thing in the world. It's not like the other time for the off angle was like night and day would have like saved you the game or whatever. This is one where it's kind of okay, and it's not the end of the world. Very nice pin from your run. Kills, basically kills Bastion and Orisa, and then uh, I guess doesn't deny the res because he's super low, which is fair. But now look at that. He made That Ryan made you guys a bit opening. And they, they can't do shit about it. Good idea to pressure the Mercy here. Unfortunately, that's the, that's the first time I think I've seen you mechanically mess up your tracking where it mattered. Um, that's just unfortunate. That happens sometimes. You know, if you, if you happen to be there when you're adjusting your mouse, or if you just happen to miss a few shots, nothing you can do about that. But yeah. Overall, the, everything beyond that, very good stuff. Pushing up here on the off angle, most importantly. Very, very smart to push the off angle here. Right. Notice how it, it, instead of, you know, you had the option, you could have walked main with your mind, you could have sat here and started shooting. Instead, you go here. Uh, maybe it wouldn't have pushed this far to the side because they are going to be generally right here, and that's close range. When you're right here, and they're right here, that's close range, you don't want to be there on Soldier. I would have maybe pushed out this left door, because if they start pushing you in here, your team can push up with that. Uh, not that they will, but they could. And even if they don't, I mean... You could back up through here and literally run back through one of these hallways and, and get out easily. Like, it's very hard to kill someone over here when you're all the way over here on most characters. Uh, this the, the off angle here was very, very smart. You went for it at the perfect time, right? You pushed ahead, realized your team had the cap covered. You pushed ahead, found a nice off angle. Uh, I'm not sure if it will pay off here because you picked the wrong place to peek on that off angle because this is just a bad place to peek, right? When you peek this doorway, you're visible to here, you're visible to here. You're visible to here, you're visible to here. Uh, you're probably even visible to, like, I don't know, some weird shit over here. But point being, you're visible to a lot of places when you peek this door that the enemy actually could be right now. Uh, and your getaway thing is a pretty long distance away. Like, if, the, if they get you to half health and this soldier decides to chase you, he can kill you before you make it through one of these uh, hallways here. Versus if you peek back here, uh, first off, you'll see anyone if they're over here before you even peek this. So that's not a real concern they could be here but that's abnormal at this point in the game so basically they won't be here if they're here you'll see them ahead of time so you can back out ahead of time and if they're up here that's like where you want them to be you'll be over here you'll be shooting from back here your team's gonna be shooting from up here and if they're a, a smarter team they have to actually back up to the right a little bit start shooting you from there uh we're just back it entirely and you basically will have won your team an extra fight for free just by being at this off angle uh and and if they decide to stay here, though, you get like two, three kills just by being here. Uh, your team can then start making a bunch of space off those two, three kills. And it's basically just a complete fight win because you were in this position at the right time like you were here. But you're a slightly wrong position. Notice here, they instantly look your way. You instantly get bursted for like 150 because you're point blank. Now, they weren't smart enough to push this and, and finish you, but in other elos, they will. <laughs> But smart of you to then back all the way out. That that was good. Some soldiers in gold would have stopped right here, popped their healing thing. You would have died if you did that. Smart of you to realize you had to go all the way because that's not a safe place to be. That's a big, deep off angle. Now, you could have probably repeaked that off angle, but it, it, it might not be the worst idea to kind of hold it down in main for a bit. It's, yeah.
Yeah, good job playing that mid range here. Good to not bother really shooting this soldier. You're not going to be able to kill him super fast and even just shooting him from here. He's long enough distance. He's barely damaging you. You would barely damage him. Instead, you're shooting the big hitbox that doesn't have a lot of health. That's that's actually a good idea here, especially when you have that pocket. You can literally just ignore that guy. And you did. And look at that. Kind of forced him in a weird spot. Now here, that was... You got lucky. <laughs> when you get antied and you're half health, instead of shooting for even a split second longer, run. Right? Just assume you're dead and run the fuck out. You you walked out, you should have ran. A, lot of, a big problem a lot of soldiers have is good soldiers aren't always shooting some of the best soldiers in this game just fucking sprint anytime they're in remote danger you know they, they basically find those off angles uh maybe get a pick or two if the people start looking their way they're half health they run the fuck away all the way back to like point uh and and if they're in main and they're doing some shots there and the same thing happens they get anti or something instead of shooting for even a frame more to get one percent ult charge they just fucking book it they're gone right that's what you want to be doing you weren't doing that here you got lucky you lived on like 30 health but you easily could have died here. Not the worst street pick, honestly. It was unfortunate that your tank moved the way he did. Very good, no, very good catch with that helix. I guess the Ana kind of got fed up with her team or something, and started throwing. But uh, a very, very good catch with that helix on soldier there. You were a bit close to that bastion there. You didn't have to be like that. Wasn't a super detrimental thing, but honestly, you could have peaked that bastion from probably like I don't know on card or something instead of like right in front of him but it wasn't the end of the world like i said pushing up here is good ignoring this orissa is fire i don't know if you came up with that yourself or if you just kind of missed her on your screen but pushing past this orissa and killing all the squishies look how much space you've made for your team notice how the the support can't stay with orissa you've killed the other guy i think this is a bug name tag i don't think that's a person but you basically you, you've killed like a lot of the squishies and made a bunch of space for your team you force the support stab, and this Orisa is just isolated. It's gonna basically just get staggered for free because you're just pushing so aggressively. That's a very, very good play. Good of you to look back uh, right there. That fade could have been many things, and the idea that maybe it could have been the fade up over this bus to go help her tank. So go look back, and even if it, even if she wasn't there, you could damage Orisa, and that's exactly what you did. This was a really, really smart play. Very nice aggression. Very good of you to notice. This this is technically an off angle right here, right? You, your team is up here and you're over here. You're holding a completely different space, different angle. And by being there, you, you basically just disrupted this whole fight and won it completely for your team. If you do more of that, you're, you're going to win every game. Because you're mechanically, you've been hitting, all, like outside that one thing with Mercy, you've been hitting every shot. Now, Okay, you have the idea here. You have the idea to be aggressive, hold space. Somehow your tank does too, even though this is gold. That, that's very abnormal. But you kind of uh, fail to recognize where. Because what the fuck is... Like, look how far away they could be. They could be here. You're going to do maybe three damage even with a Mercy Pocket. If you want to hold this angle for some reason, hold it close, hold it here. Then it's mid-range, uh, unless it's back there. But most people don't go back there, so that's fair. Uh, but what you want to do in Soldier, generally, get that high ground. Right, you just you just want to fight. You know they're all basically at this far spawn here. No one's going to be there in time. But you know some of them want to take this high ground as well. So what you can do, and what a lot of soldiers will do, they run up this staircase, and they position like around here uh, to hold that high ground and stop them from being there in the first place. If you can dominate the high ground on attack and stop the defenders from getting there, or like kind of scout them out if there's like four of them up here like with their tank or something, they come out here. Uh, that's big intel for your team. It makes it very easy to play around. And if that tank isn't up there, you can literally just kill people because people aren't always prepped for this. And even if they are, like down here is like a very, very nice way to hold this whole upper area. Do not go in here though. Big mistake, common mistake. If you go in here on soldier, you're going to die. You can't handle that close range. By being back here, or sometimes even all the way back here, you can you can really just stop them from even going high ground because they clearly have more than enough time to recontest and possibly retake this. So instead of holding, you know, Widowmaker Sight Lens in the back here, you could have been holding a nice mid-range angle to make even more space for your team. You even kind of pointed out, you're like, oh yeah, we should probably look at high ground, right? You even realized that, but you didn't realize I should be on high ground. That's your job. That's your job on Soldier. And this puts you right in a weird position where he kind of feels obliged to shield you when he really shouldn't even be there. He should just be waiting around the corner like he was initially. 
Man, notice how you're doing zero damage. You already have ult. So, look, at least sometimes if you're doing something like this, you'd be like, well, I'm getting ult charge. But you have ult. So you're not even doing that. You're not going to kill anyone from this range either. There's just no point in you being here or peeking this. Uh, by taking damage here when you have ult and all you're doing is like two damage in return. First off, you're doing two damage in return. Second off, all you're doing is charging their supports ults. Like, their Ana got to 99 now. She's probably going to get it anyway, but you'd made it much faster for them. Uh, and their DPS are also getting charge off you if they're the right ones shooting you. Like, you're just giving ult charge to them for free. This isn't really doing anything for anyone. You're not the reason they're not pushing this. They just know your Ryan's there and they don't know what to do about it. The fact they didn't push here is ridiculous. They had no reason to, to stop here. Uh, that That's just on them. Right, they might have some shattered morale or something right now, because that's just how gold is. The fact that they tried pushing after you capped it is just also weird. I mean, this this happened to work out because they're making a lot of weird plays, but this is abnormal. This isn't standard. You're getting rewarded for something that really shouldn't be rewarding you that hard. On Soldier. Other characters like Ash can do exactly what you're doing here, and that's actually optimal, because they have that longer range. But Soldier is a mid-range exclusive fight. You want to force that mid-range every time. Or take the high grounds. If you ever see, like, uh, you know, Metro gets a bad rep because, you know, he takes forever to get into GM and is unranked to GMs and is kind of toxic or whatever. But the one thing I will say that, that he says all the time, because I don't play Soldier, I've seen one or two of his things, and the one thing he always drives home is take the high ground. Soldier is really strong on high ground, very hard to contest, because he can always back out super easy, re -peak it. He's very good at those mid-long ranges, to just get some nice poke damage, poke kills. Uh, and, and if he ever gets pressure, he can run. He can always run there to you know make pressure, make space, get those off angles. And high ground, a lot of time, gives you those off angles. Now, in this case, it's weird. Uh, I don't know if being up here on Soldier is good, like straight up. I don't know if that's a good idea. I would have tried it personally, but I don't actually know. This middle section is the one weird part for Soldier where maybe being here is okay. I, I would have been on the right wall instead of the left for the same reasons before. Right, if you're on that right, if, if you're on their right wall, like where you are right now, look how far back they can see you from. They can actually be around the other corner and see you right now. If you're right here, you see the same people that you want to shoot, uh, but you're not exposed at all. And once your run gets a big shatter here, assuming this hits their supports, then you can push up and kill them around the corner. It's really not that hard. You literally sprint for one second, you're right here. But you should have pushed up this wall instead of this wall. You just made yourself more exposed for no reason. It's another thing with angles and positioning, you know. That's your main struggles right now. Just kind of knowing where to be. Unfortunate miss on that helix would have been a kill. It does happen though. Mechanics are something that'll just fix over time. Shooting tank here until until that like when a tank is antied, you can actually shoot and kill him like that. But that tank wasn't antied until halfway through. Then you were wasting a lot of time. You could have probably killed Ana instead. Like Arissa did die, but. In about half the time that it took to kill Orisa, you could have killed Ana, probably pressured, maybe even killed Moira, and then even killed Orisa. And instead of having one pick here, you'd have three, and you would have won another fight. So that was, uh, that was a bad idea. Orisa can't touch, like, Orisa will never touch DPS or anything. Orisas are literally there just to annoy other tanks, so just ignoring one is actually fine most of the time. She's not going to be able to kill you. Uh, getting that pick on Bastion was just lucky. I mean, he was making a bad play. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Uh, this is this is like I don't know what changed, but in, in on this attack, you've been doing so great with these off angles. Now with Moira there, you should have ran a little earlier. You got lucky yet again. A lot of your team has been clutching up for you. Uh, this is a weird scenario. I know it feels weird to pop visor when you just pop five olds, but there's also two meters left. You might as well. Like you can easily win this fight if you stack olds. You just send it here. You pull out like a five Q presses and win a fight. Uh, you could have even repressured that same off thing. Well, pushing that off thing was so good. Like I don't know, I don't know if you guys caught it, but if we go back a little bit, right? We had before he pushed this off angle. Soldier was holding a pretty nice position here, making it kind of hard to push anything there. And Moyer was also going to start going on a flank. As he pushes this off angle, Soldier is then because they probably called this. Soldier literally has to like bolt back to spawn. And then Moira's just in a shit position now because no one's with her. And she's not on like a good flank angle or anything. And she can't actually push up super easily. You actually force coalescence here. You didn't run out uh, as early as you could have. But otherwise, you literally you forced an ult. Their soldier actually really smart play here. Like he got out of the way, but then he actually came back in. This ult angle might pay off for him. 
I don't know if it will because you have so many ults active right now. You have you have like Nano coming out or something. You have uh, Valk active right now, and you're probably about to pop Visor. But if if the ults were any different, this soldier repeaking could have just won his uh, team the game because he's playing that off angle and forcing you. You know, if you guys are all looking at oh Ramacha and Moira in main, and then he starts coming behind you and shooting you. Uh, even if you all turn around instantly and start shooting him, he'll probably get a pick, and as you're shooting him, his teammates will get even more picks. So that off angle is super strong from him. Maybe would have considered reholding that, you know, just to double check. But honestly, this was just a really smart play from their soldier. It's not really one I would have commonly looked for. You can see right here, right? You died. You died. He played that off angle perfectly, and you died for it. Uh, that's that's all it was. He actually just off angled harder than you. And got a kill on you. You do get res here, but you also lost your tank and stuff. Backing out here was the right play. And because he didn't, you know, waste visor when I maybe would have, you also do still have that. I'm gonna cut forward a bit because I just realized the recording's 55 minutes in. I haven't really been holding back at all. I've been saying every little thing I can think of. Yeah, right here, like I said, I'm not sure if this really is an off angle. I mean, it's kind of hard to, when you're in the back up here like you were, like when you were back here, you can only really see back there and back there. And since you know they're right here, they literally couldn't challenge you. That was that was a good use of those angles. Uh, and then you happen to catch a soldier that was over there. And he had a very hard one. You know, he's over here. He, he, his whole team, uh, sorry, your whole team can see him. Uh, if you were up here, obviously you can see him. Like he's in a bad place. He's super visible to everyone over here. I had a very hard time reaching covered, and you completely smoked them by just being in a better position there. So that was very good. I will say that outside of that that last play where their soldier kind of outplayed you, uh, on attack your positioning can way better. Maybe like think more like you do here. Now here, when you shot the Bastion for like two seconds and didn't damage him before, you should have been running right then because he's clearly getting super uber healed, and they're definitely going to start looking at you eventually. So it's better to reposition before that happens. Yeah, here, uh, instead of reloading right away, keep running. It's better to run than to re You can re always reload later. Running, you can just do right away. It's not going to change the... The amount of time it takes you to reload, then run, or run and then reload is the same, but you'll be a lot safer if you run and then reload. The only reason you want to reload point blank like that is if you think someone might push you, but they couldn't have. And that's something you should have known from your position. Look at that right there. Just by being on this high ground, you... you completely massacred this ram and forced him back very very good stuff very curious to see how this ends i'm assuming you guys probably win considering there's only a minute left and there's three minutes on the clock look at that okay you didn't have to jump down there good visor though uh i mean unfortunate for you that the supports were uber pushed up that's abnormal in most higher elo games the supports are actually going to be back where you visored initially and you would have actually killed two supports there for free this was actually one a rare case where because you're in a lower elo you're actually going to get less value in most high elos the supports are still like maybe here maybe back here because they're playing a lot more safe and you would have actually picked two supports for free here by being up here uh, instead for some unknown reason both of the supports are in front of both of the dps and then ram is ulting uh, so that that is just an abnormal situation you got a bit unlucky but i will mention you made that mistake that you haven't made all game that i talked about earlier where you pop visor before you saw anyone. All right, let's actually just watch from your perspective. You don't see anyone here. Just because people will be here doesn't mean you need to pop this yet. It takes so little time for this to open. And instead of there, you could have popped it here. Like, you had enough time from walking here all the way to here. That's how much what visor you just wasted. I don't know if it'll matter for this visor, but it matters for a lot of them. That is a lot of time wasted. I don't know if we can see the... I don't know if there's like a timer for visor or something, but if there was one, you could see that. Yeah, nice pick there. What a helix earlier to guarantee the kill, because obviously they're going to hard pocket that guy. But now that their whole team's turned to you, instead of fighting a 1v4 here, even though you have visor, run, get back up the stairs, get out, your team will start pushing up. Then you can re-peak the same high ground, get a lot more value, or even you know, pick an off aim to go through. Uh, this is a common mistake that you just stayed in here, kept shooting, I'm assuming, and died. You could have probably escaped that. I know all four of them were actually chasing you because you had Visor up and you did happen to pick an Ana, but I think you could have lived if you just completely booked it and didn't also commit so hard when you Visor. Because that was something I didn't mention, uh, but when you were killing Bastion, you had no reason to drop down. You could see him that whole time. Drop down maybe if he was too health and you had to see him from there. 
Uh, but even then, drop down here so you can get out easier. You don't want to push out. You were out in the middle of the open right here where there's no escape. But you could have lived that easily and then won your team a fight. Uh, I think your team might still clutch this up because, like I said, you got two picks. But you could have made this like two picks and live. And in like I said, in higher elo, you would have gotten two supports instead of, you know, one of each. Yeah, get in your Ryan to recognize that the high ground is obviously uncontested here and gun you to go with them. High ground is nice, generally. Uh, somehow their tank does here, absolutely free for you. Big, big positioning, good plays here. That was really smart. Unfortunately, you didn't mechanically finish that up. But notice that, like, like obviously Bastion was there, but you played back against the wall here and just kept shooting their supports. And that forced them all the way back here while their bastion was still stranded up here and he's probably gonna die for it i don't know if this is the fight you win but it probably should be you position super well there team even gets the res off your ryan doesn't go hyper aggro unfortunately that, that shadow doesn't hit but that just happened some oh it did hit oh, the big shadow then <laughs> i didn't realize it actually hit those people now you actually should have recognized that Moira was coming this way and and been looking for her earlier because she faded off to the side. She's not. She's either a gonna recontest from here, in which case your McCree's old thing has it uh, covered, or Ryan has it covered, and your team's probably gonna ping her or something or talk about it, so you would have been able to look forward again because it's very easy to turn back and forth uh, on any character, including Soldier. Uh, but instead, you could have been more ready for this Moira. You'll probably kill her here because you know you have a Valk on you and, and she's just a lone Moira. Uh, but you could have looked over here. I mean, that was a pretty obvious flank for her to go on. Uh, just for two seconds, look back, check if she was there, and then check main again. Uh, good of you not to chase her there. That's also a common mistake. There's no reason to chase her, and then your team happened to cap there. But not chasing her there was actually smart. Uh, overall, I'm very impressed with what I just saw. That was a that was a really, really good match for a gold player. The mechanics were good, you already have half the ideas in your head, but for some reason you have it locked in only on attack. Uh, a lot of these off angles and pushes you're doing on attack, you can actually do on defense, and you can literally solo carry your games. A few fights that we saw there uh, came down to one or two small positional mistakes that changed your 4Ks into 1Ks, and that's pretty much all it was. But yeah, I hope this was useful to you, uh, women, and I hope anyone that happened to watch this also found it useful. If you end up liking this video, I'll probably do more VOD reviews. Uh, if not, this will be a one and done. But yeah, either way, hope you guys enjoyed and have a great rest of your day.